The shear clamp is an integral part of the structure of the boat. It runs along the shear of the hull, and not only does it help the structure of it, but it helps hold its shape. So in this episode, we're going to do a steam in place method of attaching the shear clamps. So right now, I'm going along the starboard side and replacing the clamps with number 10 two-inch screws to permanently attach the shear clamp to the hull of the boat. So all of this in this episode of The Art of Boat Building. The first thing we need to do in order to lay out the shear clamps is to determine the crown of the deck. And so what I've made here is a pattern for the crown of the deck, which we'll be using often in laying this out. The plans call out that it should be one and a half inches in five feet. So I laid that out using a batten to get a nice gentle curve. I then cut it out on the bandsaw, leaving the pencil line. So once I had it cut out, I then have trimmed it up with a piece of sandpaper and a little bit of a hand plane to get a really nice fair curve. So what I'm going to do first is to take this pattern and use this to determine the angle of the top of all of the frames. Now that I've got all those cut off, uh, I want to take out these lifting braces that are holding the shape of the boat. But before I can take them out, I need to put in some other temporary ones below the shear line uh, so that the shape of the boat keeps its shape until I get those shear clamps in. So over here at the plans, we can see that the shear clamp needs to be one and three quarter inch wide by one and five sixteenths and it needs to be made out of Douglas fir and it needs to have a jog between frames six and ten. So what's meant by that jog is down here in this part of the plan we can see that here at six and at ten this clamp jogs up towards the shear. So it here, this dashed line here represents the top of the shear as it is right now. The next dotted line shows the shear once the deck and the covering uh, boards are on. So from this point down to here then is one and five sixteenths. Here, it needs to drop down from that shear line another one and a quarter. And that one and a quarter is represented by the thickness that the deck beams will be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the big boards that I had at stations 10 and 16 for lifting and replace those boards down below the shear and actually right where the shear clamp should sit on that. And in addition to that, I'm going to put some smaller blocks up here so that I'll have something to clamp to when I put the, the uh, shear clamp in there because um, it'll need to bend uh, quite drastically, not only with the uh, shape of the boat in plan, but also it needs to bend 
with the shear. Sixteenths. Okay, so if I put a board across there, it should work. The other side. Sixty-eight and a half. So I've gone around and put some little registration blocks around the hull of the boat about every third frames or so. And that way, when I put the clamp on, the shear clamp on there, I'll actually be able to clamp it to one of those blocks. So the plans call for a bracket that is in the back to receive the shear clamp. And it's designed so that 
it fits back here like so. And I uh, have put an additional little block in here because you can see that it's a fairly compound angle. And if that shear clamp was going back there, it'd be really difficult to get that exact angle on there. So by putting this little block in there, that gives me a 90 degree mark that I can then lay that clamp on there and then saw that in so it'll fit in there just right. The other thing is that the board that I have measures exactly 16 feet one inch. And 16 feet one inch is just a little bit shy of the end of here. So that gives me just a little bit more leeway to know that I, my board will be long enough to fit in there. So what I'm gonna do next is to take some uh, 5200 uh, sealant and put that on there as a bedding compound and fasten that in with some screws. Now that I've got the boat all prepared to receive the shear clamp, it's time to start milling out the Douglas fir that is called for for the material. So I purchased two 2x8s 16 feet long of Douglas fir, and by doing that I was able to sort of select out of there a place that I could get as clear as possible. This is actually a trick, is if you really want a good piece of small material is to buy a wider material. Now, in theory, you could have used just one 16 foot two by four and split it down the middle. But two by fours are not nearly as clean as like a two by eight or a two by 10. So by using this two by eight, I was able to get two fairly clean pieces of stock out of it. And you can even see here on the end that they're even very close to being quarter sawn. So after I cut the material out, I ran it through the thickness planer in order to get the exact one and three quarters by one and five sixteenths. So now that I have those prepared, I can now start determining what the angle that the shear clamp is going to meet here at the stem. Now it's a fairly oblique angle, so I wanted to work it out ahead of time. Now to complicate the matter, um, the boat is sloped in pretty drastically at this point and so the shear clamp is going to need to be cut with a rolling bevel because what we want is the top of the clamp to be even with the angle of the crown. So I've cut a small piece here and you can see that it's a pretty strong uh, angle at this point. Now what I've also done is I've taken the end of this little stock and I've determined what those angles need to be in order to be able to transfer this to the large pieces of stock so that when I'm getting ready to install them in the boat, they'll be able to both fit right in here without having to adjust this part. So this is where I'll start and then I'll slowly clamp the clamp in on around as it's getting steamed. As I had mentioned earlier, that the shear clamp needs to have a rolling or progressive bevel on it. So in order to find that measurement, I've taken my uh, the deck crown pattern here, and then I'm going to take a measurement off of that. And what I've done is I've created this small storyboard here. So what I've done here is I've taken a stick that is exactly one and three quarters inches wide, which is the depth of the shear clamp. And then 
the thickness of the top is 1 and 5 sixteenths. So at every even frame, so I've marked them here, 2, 4, 6 onward, and so what I've just measured frame number 4. So we'll put this on here and mark it. So now I can see that this dimension here is what would be on the bottom side of the shear clamp. So I'm going to continue on and mark out the rest of those and then I'm going to determine how far apart each of these frames are along the bilge. So I've just fashioned a surveyor's tape along here. And a surveyor's tape, the tape is perfectly flat, so it's going to lay against the boat nicely. Unlike a steel tape that most of us are used to that has got a little curve to it. And so in order for it to go around there, it's not going to bend very well. Um, of course, it's bent that way so that you're able to measure distances without the um, tape drooping. So now that I've got this on there, what I'm going to do is go along at those even frames and write down what that dimension is and then transfer that to the stock. So I've gone along and laid the tape out on here and measured out each of those stations. Now these do not have to be absolutely perfect because I realize that, that tape being on the outside is going to be a slightly different measurement when it's nearly uh, an inch and a half in. But nonetheless, this gives us a, basically just a general ballpark to get to. So here at frame six now, and I use my storyboard on frame six, and line that up like that, and then make a mark there. And this is the finished. So then on the other side, I need to turn it around to be there, like that. All right, well, we've got all of our stock ready for the shear clamps. So the next thing to do is to steam them. And I'm going to use a steam in place method with a bag, which is made popular by Louis Sardis of uh, Tips from a Shipwright. So the first thing I need to do is to construct those bags. So to get started making my steamer bags, I bought some polyfilm that was 8 by 25 and it's uh, 4 millimeters thick. I used the natural folds that it came with to uh, trim off the amount that I needed. So what I have here is a piece that's uh, looks like about four or five, four and a half, five inches wide. And I'm going to uh, set it so that it's about a quarter of an inch overhang on my cable saw here. Now I've got this piece of cast iron weight it came from something and I'm going to set that right in line with the table saw and then take a propane torch and just heat that. Now the trick here is, is that you can see that it, the cloudy film turns clear as soon as it's melted together. And I kind of slide it over and move the weight on top of there and let that cool off. And it doesn't take very long at all, especially the the uh, metal of the table saw, and this is really pretty cool. So then I just move down 12, 14 inches or so, put my weight on there, and beat that up. The way that I had seen Lou do it is he would have the had the film hanging over quite a bit more and then he took his fingers and smashed it together. Well, not all of us are Lou with that kind of experience. This way you don't have to worry about burning your fingers. It's going to melt right up to where it needs to. It won't go beyond the table saw. Now you just slide it over. 
and press it down. It's steaming along pretty good now. Uh, we've uh, been going for about 45 minutes or so. And I put the seam of the bag on the top so that if there was any little pinholes, they would then act as a, a little bit of a vent. Uh, the vent helps uh, circulate the steam, so it does need to escape somewhere, otherwise the bag would literally explode. So. Um, the way I've got this set up is I've got both of my steamers going. So on one end, I've got my metal can with the turkey fryer as the heat source. And on the other end, I've got the little wallpaper steamer to steam that. This end of the um, plank will need to be bent a little stronger than at the aft end. So that's why I put the big steamer there. So we're gonna let this go for at least another uh, hour, maybe hour and a half, um, and then we'll get it positioned.
I'm going to along the top of the plastic right now and cutting it so that the clamp can dry out and cool off. And then tomorrow when I come back, I'll just be able to loosen these clamps a little bit and that plastic will slide right out from underneath it. So that's it for this episode. On the next video, we'll be start to working on the deck structure. So as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you the next time on the Art of Boat Building.